Joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show is one of my favorites, and I, I it truly, I cherish the the time that we got to spend some time together on the road way back in the Thursday night football, first blush Thursday night football days on NFL Network, but he is calling in because a landmark 300th episode of Real Sports with Brian Gummel is streaming on HBO Max right now, the perennial Emmy Award winner, Brian Gumbel, here on the Rich Eisen Show. How you doing, Brian? Excellent, pal. How you been? I'm doing great. Congrats on 300 episodes. Congrats. Thanks so very much. means I'm getting old. <laughs> it means also the show is as great as ever. Uh, when did you first um, ha- have this idea placed in front of you or want to do something like I'm real sports? Yes, probably in the early 90s. Um, Seth Abraham was head of HBO Sports, and we'd had a few conversations about trying this. Um, at the time, I was hosting the Today Show, and uh, frankly, didn't even know if they'd let me do this. Um, but uh, it worked out. We tried it as a one-off to see if there was an appetite for it, and it was kind of well-received. And then we did two of them for a year, and after a couple of years, we started doing a monthly, and here we are, what, 28 years later, we're still doing it. Well, obviously, everybody wants to put their best foot forward in a new endeavor. So what was the story that you knew, okay, if we're going to do this, or I'm going to try this, I'm going to want to make it as good as possible. We want to come out know, and we, get We kind of got lucky right out of the box, Rich, to be honest. Um, you know, um, I went back and I looked at, uh, it was called to my attention, the first show. And that first show, oddly enough, is kind of funny how much things have not changed. Um, the first show, our lead story was about baseball's labor crisis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but uh, that's <laughs> funny. Back then, if you recall, I mean, I know you were a baby at the time. Nice. But it was, they wound up with a uh, strike-shortened season. It was a 144-game season. Right. Um, and and that was our lead story. And then we also had a story about the the um, the state culture of Augusta National that that the late great Frank DeFord referred to as mm. American Singapore. Mm. Um, <laughs> and we had Billy Crystal talking about his um, Yankee memorabilia. Um, we had a lot of things going for us, and it and it was well received. So we we got fortunate. Well, it wasn't just the the the. Um the stories and then the writing and the producing, obviously those are great, but the storytellers as well. You just mentioned Frank DeFord and, uh, you know, uh, Susie Schuster, uh, who you know, because she yeah. worked as a producer on Real Sports for a couple of years, and she still talks about those moments as being some of the best of her professional career. And one of her favorite moments was producing a piece for Frank DeFord um, when he was going after the IOC, which, as you know, was worthy yeah. of going after. Yeah. They've been a frequent target of ours. <laughs> uh, I, I know. I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of easy to shoot at, frankly. They do so many things wrong, and they're in bed with all the worst, worst characters on the planet, and, and they all have the worst motives, and they're, and they're greedy and corrupt to boot. But other than that, they're great. I know. She, but she talks about Frank DeFord, the late Frank DeFord. Uh, you got a good Frank DeFord story, how he got involved in this? Any, anything you want to share about Frank? You know, from- Frank? Frank and I had been friends for a long time. We, we, were, we were kind of kindred spirits in that we, we were about the same age. Um, we, we both um, kind of looked at sports askance. We, we thought the, 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 the stories were much more interesting than the scores. And, and, and we both had a fondness for writing. And, and, and we used to, for a long time, bounce ideas off each other. So, so when this first got going, he was kind of the first name we thought of. And, and Frank, Frank was, was uh, not only a great writer and a, and a great storyteller, but he was, he was a terrific friend. Um, and, and I still miss him dearly. I had the privilege of doing his eulogy. I, 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 I miss Frank every day. What, so what do you want folks to maybe know about? I, again, I, I know you have so many terrific correspondents, and I'm, I'm kind of lingering on him just because his, his words were almost as finely uh, appointed as his dress, you know? I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, he was, he was an eccentric dresser. He was the only guy I knew, thank God, who wore an ascot <laughs> um, and, and looked good in it. Oh, <laughs> uh, so he did. Um, and, and, and his, uh, his color of choice, he always liked splashy colors. His color of choice was purple. Mm-hmm. He used to show up sometimes in the oddest, I, I want to say they're shoes, but they were more like slippers. Um, and he'd have he'd sometimes have polka dot socks on. He was um, um, how do I say a foppish dresser? Nice, that is a good one. Um, yeah, I think Susan Susan relate to that. Yeah, um, yeah, he was a foppish dresser. Um, but Frank Frank was a wonderful guy. I used to bounce commentaries off of him. Um, uh, I'd, I'd call him up the night before and said, Frank, give give this thing a look. Tell me what you think. And and and. Uh, 
He, he he just had a he just had a great eye. He was a terrific storyteller. He was and, a terrific storyteller. Right. He, you know, he's one of a lot we've had over the years. We've had. I was telling somebody yesterday. It was kind of funny to go back and look at people who've been our correspondents for a time. We had Spike Lee as a correspondent for a time. We have David Frost as a correspondent. Mm-hmm. Um, we had Leslie Visser. We had James Brown. Um, we've had Mary Carrillo for a long time. Um, you know, we've been very very fortunate. We really have. We've had a lot of good storytellers. Armin Katayan few others um you know we've had a great diverse cast of characters i've been a lucky man 28th season 300 episodes in of real sports 33 sports emmy awards 19 trophies for outstanding sports journalism and then there's the peabody's and so uh, for the dupont awards as well and i know brian cumble it might be you know um uh, difficult to to come up with the answer to this is, is there one story that stands out that you're proud of because of the change that came from it or the conversation you know, that came out of it Rich, it's really hard. I, I i never try to pick among them so i will answer it this way the story that i think um did the most in terms of a it was a good story b it was an award-winning story c it turned a life around um was the story of marcus dixon you know, Marcus Dixon was a young man who, when the story came to us, um, was being, in my, prison, in my opinion, falsely imprisoned for having consensual sex with a teenage girl. Um, and and uh, we got on the story, and long story short, it caused a lot of hubbub, and Marcus rightfully won his release from prison. And today he's the defensive line coach of the Denver Broncos. Mm. You know, so I mean, this was a young man who, because of our judicial system and the way it was set up in the in the South, um, was a young black kid who was sent to prison for basically having sex with a white girl. That's what it was, and and uh, and we wound up doing the story, and Marcus wound up being released, wound up getting his degree, wound up playing in the NFL, wound up with a Super Bowl ring last year with the Rams, and wound up as the defensive line coach this year of the Denver Broncos. And that, to me, is. You know, that's as much as you can ask for from a story, to save a life and, and to turn around a life. Is there an interview that you had set up and um, fell through that uh, you lament? Or... of them. <laughs> <laughs> I and bet. you know that very well. Right. Um, there's a lot of times, as you know, when you, you, know, you, you, you conceive of a story and you kind of play it out in your head, mm-hmm. and then you try to execute it and you realize, wow, this is not going to go very well. Um, that there's a certain times you can't get blood from a rock, and, and you, you know, you do your best, and what do they say? Even the best of hitters hit 300, <laughs> 3 for 10. So um, you're going to strike out sometimes. Sometimes you hit home run. A lot of times you hit singles. Uh, anybody that, uh, that uh, you wish you could have had on over the last 300 episodes? Wow, that's episodes. a great question. Um, you know, it depends on the time. Um, there are guys that that I wish I could have on that won't talk to us. Like I wish I could talk to Roger Goodell about um, why they're not investigating the Flores' claims about Steve Ross saying that he, you know, offered to pay him to lose games. Um, I'm kind of surprised we have not kind of heard that that investigation is going on. As I understand it, there has not been a question even asked. Um, So things like that, you know, I'd like to ask Adam Silver about some things uh, from time to time, uh, particularly about forays into China and the extent to which Daryl Morey's words you know, upended the apple cart for them and how they get out from under that and how they justify being a forward social thinking league with uh, doing business in China, which has a lot of human rights violations. Um, but, but you know, I, I live in the real world. Um, I recognize there are people who, who choose not to speak with us, who would prefer not to have to answer some difficult questions, and life goes on. Brian Gumbel here on the Rich Eisen Show. And in terms of the National Football League, your your history involved with the broadcasting of it is deep. And I'm not just talking about the couple of years that we were, I was thrilled to be a colleague of yours on NFL Network for Thursday Night Football. I'm, I'm talking about the creation of, of, of Sunday morning NFL um Back in the studio old days. shows, yeah, and and Back you know, obviously, I t- you know what I tell I tell my uh, my kids, I, and I call them my kids. They're grown adults now, right. but they are my kids. Um, you know, they don't remember it very well, but um, the shows that now have five and six people on, <laughs> um, we used to do alone. <laughs> You did it right, like because again, uh, so much talk is of the the Musburger and Jimmy the Greek, Irv Cross, and Irv Cross, uh, right, and Phyllis George and Jane Kennedy CBS version of things. But then you were you were doing Grandstand right uh, yourself, or I did, I did Grandstand first with the great Jack Buck, right, 
Um, and then um, we did uh, what was then NFL 74 or 5, somewhere in there with Lee Leonard. And then um, I did it alone for several years um, until I wound up doing it uh, towards the back end with Mike Adamley. Mike Adamley, right. Oh, remember Mike Adamley? Of course. I remember Axtelm, too. Where did Pete get involved oh, yeah. in that? Yeah, Axtelm was, was basically our version of uh, the Jimmy Greek. the Greek. Yeah. Uh, with a lot more humor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and less fisticuffs, I imagine. Yeah, you know? less fisticuffs. <laughs> Axe was terrific. Axe, Axe had the great line. He said, you know you have a gambling problem when you buy a paper and you find out your team lost and go buy another paper. <laughs> what was it like, though, back in the day when... It was wild, you know, man, because we had... Um, it, you know what? It, you look at the cast of characters, it was not only that, but we had Don Olmeyer in the booth. Right. Oh, boy. Um, back there in the truck. Smoky Don. And... Believe it or not, you're going to find this very hard to believe. Um, back when I used to do it alone, we did not have a script. So you were just talking about games that were coming up later that day and Olmeyer's in your ear and say, stuff like that? We'd say, you know what, let's run the tease, and I'll come up and I'll talk for 45 seconds and throw it to the first site, and while they're vamping, we'll talk about what we'll do next. <laughs> and, wow. and that's what we'd do, and while they were vamping then we'd say when you come out of this give me 30 seconds and i'll get to our first piece which is such and such and that's what we do who was the lead voice back then was that emberg the lead voice on um, NBC at the to time think, um, would have been charlie jones or charlie. emberg what could have been gowdy um, was kirk gowdy still at it at that point in time i kirk, mean kirk wasn't um part of it i okay. had worked with kurt but i don't think kurt was doing nfl by by 74 or 5 i could be wrong I could be wrong. It might have been Enberg. I remember Enberg and Charlie Jones and Don Cricky and Marv. I mean, oh God. those were... Aldi Rogatis, um, right. uh, Bob Costas was with us at the time. Um, also, um, uh, Washington, uh, what was his first name out of Stanford, the little wide receiver, number eight. Oh, um, man. This is... I, I, I love this stuff because, again, Brian... I'm <laughs> oh, serious. Trumpy. Remember we had of Bob Of course. Trumpy? You know, Enberg and Trumpy and, and, uh, and you know, Merlin Olson eventually joining, you know, Father, Father Murphy. Yep. You know, I, I again, I, I I think about this a lot, and I've said this to Musburger when I've spoken to him, Brian, that I when I'm sitting in this chair, I'm, I'm I'm I just have three guys to my left, but there are guys, there are shows with five, six. Oh, I yeah. I think about it all the time. That that I know, and it's funny. You know, it's really hilarious, Rich. Um, and and this was up until a couple of years ago when Brett moved to Vegas. Vegas. Mm-hmm. Brett and I lived down the street from each other in Florida for a time. <laughs> <laughs> when you were doing these shows together, or the, the, after that? That was after after, was after all that. that. Oh boy! It was in recent years. Congratulations on uh, on Real Sports, Brian. I mean, it is something always, that is it's always good to talk to you. Give Sus my love, will you? I, I will absolutely do that. Congrats on this, and I hope it won't be another hundred some odd shows before we get to to do this again. I always I'm appreciate. I'm always ready it. to buy you a drink, pal. I appreciate. Oh yeah, uh, last thing too is uh, everyone wants to know, and you hear this all the time. I'll ask it anyway. What are you writing down on that yellow um, label pad? You know what? Come I'll probably now. say it at my at my on my deathbed. Um, I, I I I never there talk about it. I really don't. Everybody asks, um, and I actually am writing something, but I just have gotten in the habit of never answering it. So I'm not going to start now. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the exclusive, Brian. You I know. Get it. I get it. You know what? Come to the deathbed ceremony. No, come on else. now. We can't end like that. But <laughs> so, do you have like? It, 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 are they archived? Do you have like the first episode no, of Yale no, Legal Pen? I'm, I'm not. A, I'm not a, a keeper keep of it? that kind of stuff. Um, you know, my God. You know, it's going to be 50 years in September. I'll have been in the broadcast business. If I kept every note from every interview I've ever done, I, I wouldn't have a place to live. So it's like you don't write down Bernie Goldberg so full of it. I can't wait to ask him when we come out of it. Like that doesn't. <laughs> That's not, um, that's not what it is? It's not that I haven't written that. I probably didn't at the time. <laughs> okay. Very good, Brian. Well, you'll just keep us guessing. For, uh, as, I get as, it. Thanks for the call. Rich, it's always a pleasure. Right back at you. That's the great Brian Gumble right here with 300 episodes of Real Sports in the Books on The Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.